Hey everybody, welcome to the 68th edition of the Animated Girl Profiles Confidential. And as you see by the title, we are talking about a very popular uh, animated character who actually is one of the more popular comic book characters to actually debut officially in animated form. And of course we're talking about Harley Quinn. Yes, Harley Quinn, who is really at her peak of popularity right now. As a matter of fact, she has a movie coming out next month, the Birds of Prey movie. Um, its title is not just Birds of Prey, but it's also about Harley and all that. It's going to be rated R, so if you're going to go see that with your young uh, kids, family, if you will, you know, remember it is going to be R-rated. So, Keep in mind of that if you decide to go see it. But with that said, with that said, for some of you probably listening to this, you're probably wondering if you are, that is, who is Harley Quinn? Well, basically, long story short, she was introduced originally in the Batman animated series in the first season, I believe. Can't think of the episode name right now, but she was introduced as an associate to the Joker. And as the series progressed for seasons and seasons to come afterwards, it was initially, if not visually shown, that she was in love with the Joker, although through many interpretations throughout the past 25 years, 25, 26 years, that's how long she's been around, guys, believe it or not, because I think the animated series came out around 1992, 1993, and she's been around for quite some time, so about 25 years years plus she's been around and in those 25 years Harley Quinn has gone through many interpretations uh, the animated series has touched upon this several times especially towards the end in the middle during the prime of, the, of its run and then the comic books really touched upon this took off off on the story angle between uh, Harley Quinn and the Joker and basically like I said different interpretations here and there and now we are in the midst of where we are right now, we're Harley. Again, it all depends on your interpretation and, and the uh, version of Harley Quinn that you associate with when you read the comics or any adaptation out there. As a matter of fact, there are some interpretations where she's still associated with the Joker. There are some interpretations where she's not. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest examples right now, if not one of the best examples right now, and I still got to catch up on this, is the DC animated series by Warner Brothers called Harley Quinn, which can be seen on the DC Universe streaming app, and I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure it's going to also be seen on HBO Max down the line. And um, when that debuts in a few months, or in several months that is, I'm pretty sure Harley Quinn will be a show that they will want to try to air over on that station as well. I mean, on that service as well, along with the DC Universe uh, service. And... You know, yeah, basically Harley Quinn, it's a, from what I've seen, the clips that I have seen, this is actually looks like it's a pretty good show, it's funny, it's violent, I will tell you that, it is violent, it is funny though, uh, you could definitely tell just by the clips if you have not seen it, they are teasing some sexual tension between um, Harley and Poison Ivy, uh, and in case you guys don't know why they're teasing that in this animated, uh, adult animated series based on Harley Quinn, uh, basically, long story short, uh, later on down in the comics, um, I think it was a Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy comic, because they did have one that was named after both. And I, or it could have been just an individual Harley Quinn titled comic. I don't really know. I gotta look. I gotta look this up. But there was uh, an issue where basically they finally did kiss on the lips, both of them, and basically profess uh, the love for each other as more than just acquaintance, friends, you get the idea. They basically became lesbians, let's put it that way. And that was a moment that when it happened, it did get people talking because they're like the only reason it was done was because of Pride Month and this and that. It, it really kind of got people talking, you know, debating whether or not why, you know, it happened when it did and should it have happened, stuff like that. 
<laughs> yeah, Harley Quinn, she has a love interest um, in the franchise, again, depending on the adaptation of it. And it's, uh, it's Poison Ivy. It's not just the Joker anymore. It's also Poison Ivy, like I said, depending on the adaptation. Uh, there's also other uh, versions of Harley Quinn out there to where, speaking of Poison Ivy, Poison, even, Poison Ivy even affected her from what I understand. And some fans have actually drawn this up as their own theory as to what potentially could happen. But I think DC even picked up the ball and said, yeah, we're going we're gonna to try this as an alternate universe Harley and go from there. And I think what happened, and basically I think what happened in... Uh, I don't know if it was a one-shot comic or what it was. They showed, and, and this was official DC, DC art, I believe. They showed Harley Quinn basically uh, transformed into a another plant girl like uh, Poison Ivy was. So Poison Ivy now had a companion. and uh, Not just a companion, but had a more closer connected bond with, with Harley. I think. I'm not really sure. Again, there is some official DC art, I think, of that, as well as some fan-made art that you can find in places like DeviantArt. But uh, Harley Quinn, like, like I said, has become a very popular character um, throughout her run. And there's no doubt about it. It's like, initially, as I mentioned, she was introduced originally in the Batman animated series, and just as time went on, just took off. She took off from there. Like I said, she just took off from there, and... It's never looked back since because it's like you can't go anywhere without seeing some kind of Harley Quinn merch or whether it's clothes, I you know, toys, you name it. You can't go anywhere without seeing some kind of Harley Quinn merchandise on display. As a matter of fact, I go to my job and when you go into what's known as the celebration slash uh, fabrics area and arts and crafts, if you will, area of my job, you know, where they have glasses on display, novelty glasses. There's always, on several occasions, a Harley Quinn novelty glass right then and there. As a matter of fact, my niece, uh, my oldest niece, niece, my only niece, I should say, uh, for Halloween one year, actually dressed up as Harley Quinn in uh, herself. So, yeah, Harley Quinn, like I said, her popularity just soared and just, she's never looked back since. This character's popularity just is on, it's like on another level. It is. It's on another level. As a matter of fact, she was, not only is she, I should say, not only is she like the star of the upcoming Birds of Prey movie, like the featured character character, but she also was the featured character when it came to the Suicide Squad movie, as well as she was the, um, well, she and I think, what was it, Deadshot, played by Will Smith, but mainly, you know, Harley Quinn was like the real center point of it, Deadshot was kind of there too, so her and Deadshot, like I said, were like even, but then... But then you get into other adaptations of Harley Quinn, and you get things like, um, let's say, Batman and Harley Quinn, which is a PG-13, almost R-rated animated film in the DC Animated Universe uh, lineup, and she... And it's it's called Batman and Harley Quinn, but you could tell it's based in it's like I said it's PG thirteen R, almost R, but you could tell it's based in the Batman or at least inspired by being in the style of the Batman animated uh, animated series universe. But then, of course, you have other things like um, you have other other ones like. Assault the Batman movie, which is mainly a suicide movie. Uh, attack on our uh, uh, attack on. Uh, you have the Batman animated film, which is Attack on Arkham. Then you have Suicide Hell to Pay. You got just a bunch of, of movies, and then of course you have her uh, involvement in the crossover with the Ninja Turtles, where she gets mutated into a freaking hyena herself. So. Yeah, but that's only temporary. But the point is, she is really just taken off on onto her own, and her comic book series, depending on the ver any version that she's involved in, that's selling like hotcakes at times. It's like you can't read 
uh, you can't go to a comic shop and not see a Harley Quinn st uh, comic book there that's nearly, that needs to be restocked or something. So yeah, she's very, very popular. And there's and I and I, you have to you really have to give it to uh, DC for doing what they've done with Harley. Depending on the adaptations, like like I said, the new animated series for adults on the uh, DC Universe streaming app or streaming service, Harley Quinn definitely shows Harley coming into her own. And Suicide Squad has done that. Birds of Prey is going to be doing that, showing Harley Quinn that hey. She doesn't need the Joker. She could be on her own, stuff like that, which, again, is a great move on their part because, obviously, they're listening to the fans and they're realizing that the fans are saying, hey, look, you know, give Harley Quinn her own title. Let her have her own adventures. Go from there. And they do that. They really do. And the fact that they give her a backstory where she was once a therapist that, I guess, depending on the adaptation or the version of Harley Quinn you read, like the uni alternate universe version or the prime universe version that you read of her, she has a good backstory. She was basically a psychiatrist, a doctor psychiatrist, if you will, for Arkham, named Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Harley Quinzel, I believe. And she basically, having the Joker as one of her... Uh, having the Joker as basically one of her patients, fell for him. You know, he gave her this sad story and all that, and through that he fell for her. So, or she fell for him, I should say. So, yeah. You know, they gave her a great backstory. I think sometimes they do alter her backstory a little bit. It's always, it kind of stays the same, kind of tries to stay to it towards its core of what it was or what it is but there are times that most most but there are times that it will change a little bit to be a little bit more interesting a little bit more dramatic a little darker but it's pretty much at its core the same story um, there are times where like I said as she has grown into her own and developed into her own and become her own character to where she will side with Batman and be like you know look you got to help me here he's like you know, Mr. J, she would call the Joker. Sometimes she would even acknowledge he's gone too far and he's got to be stopped. And it's really, it's really kind of cool. It's really, it's, to me, it's really cool to see Harley going through these developments, depending on the versions that you see of her in the multi-universe of DC. It's, it's kind of cool to see these uh, versions of her. As a matter of fact, when the Birds of Prey television series was out for its brief time, you even had a live-action version of her there. So, it was, it's, again, it shows you just how popular this character has become, that even as early as the original Birds of Prey series, she made her own appearance, minus the Joker, so... She didn't need, it's like at that time, you knew she didn't need anybody to hang up on or hang on to. Um, but yeah, she's, she's really, really pop. She's really come into her own a lot. As a matter of fact, when you get into the Injustice games, like Injustice, in the Injustice 2 game, I should say, it really shows you how much she's come into her own. You know, it really does. So, so yeah, I can't really say any more about Harley Quinn that nobody else knows about, because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that know who Harley Quinn is, know a lot more on the backstory, know a lot more about this character. I mean, the fact that you have Tara freaking Strong, Tara Strong, yes, the voice of Twilight Sparkle as the voice of Harley Quinn originally, that's saying something. I mean, Tara Strong is going to be associated with two main voices for the past decade or so for the next how many years you know she's going to keep doing this she's going to be acknowledged for two main voices bringing two characters to life the first of course is Harley Quinn and then the other is going to be Twilight Sparkle <laughs> those are the voices she's going to be associated with no matter what but yeah she is again she's just a very Harley Quinn though is just one of those characters that when she first got introduced you would think she's not going to last long and yet bam here we are about 25 plus years later and not only is she one of the more popular if not the most popular character in DC Comics and if not in all of comic books today but she is one of the more popular pop culture figures to come out of 
any kind of media in the past 20 years, period. So, yeah, basically Harley Quinn, and, you know, she's really coming to her own as a character, and the fact that, like I said, she has her own animated series on the DC streaming service, which, again, I'm pretty sure when HBO Max starts taking off in April, May of this year, that they're going to try their best to get the Harley Quinn series over to there. Uh, and make that available to those subscribers. It just shows you how popular she is. And I think the reviews for the Harley Quinn series has been very positive. And I'm definitely going to have to check it out when I get time. But it is very, very good. But from what I can tell, it's definitely one series that people would recommend you see and enjoy. So that's so basically in the end guys that's all I can really say without saying any more than what anybody else could say about Harley. So yeah, that's about it guys. So let me know what you all think down below. Comment if you like. Let me know what your thoughts are on Harley Quinn and what are you looking forward to, look what are you looking forward towards the most of Harley uh, in the future and what do you expect to happen in her new animated series if it gets any second season down the line. What do you guys expect? So let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thank you all for listening to this, the 68th. That's right, the six, I think he's, I think I said 68th at the beginning. Yeah, 68th edition of the Animated Girls Profile Confidential. And I will talk to you all later.